Hey, good morning, guys. Good afternoon. Good evening. Just depending on where you are, when you're tuning in. Today, I'm going to make a quick video for you. This is a Linux tutorial on how to set up and use FTP in a Linux environment. This will allow us to transfer files easily between two Linux hosts or even from a Windows host over to a Linux host. So I'll walk you through this step by step. I'll also include, as I usually do, a step by step, excuse me, a step by step instructions uh, booklet, if you will, in the description with all the necessary commands and a breakdown of um, what to run when and kind of what they do. So uh, before we get started, guys, I appreciate the recent support. Channel's growing. Please click that thumbs up button. I know over 90% of my views are coming from non-subscribers, so please consider subscribing. Um, woke up this morning and I saw that uh, YouTube had actually taken down my most successful video to date. So that was a little disheartening, but I'm disputing that and hopefully we can get that back online, guys. So I'm not going to let it stop me. Let's jump right in and create another video. All right, guys. So I've got two uh, Kali Linux VMs going. You can use any flavor of Linux you want. If you want to know how to get a, a Linux VM up and running in a matter of minutes, check out my other video. You'll find it in the Offensive Security Ethical Hacking Kali Linux uh, playlist. And it'll get you running with a Linux VM. It'll be Kali in under five minutes. All right, guys. So let's uh, open a terminal. Oops. Try that again. We'll get a terminal on both of the uh, Kali boxes. And the second Kali box, we'll call it Kali 2, is where I'll actually set up the FTP server. By default, um, Linux will come with the FTP client. So for example, if you type FTP, you'll see you jump into FTP mode. We'll get out of there by typing by. But we're going to want to install a service called VSFTPD. So to do that, we'll run a few commands. We'll do app git install VSFTPD. And if you guys get this error about unable to locate package, just run uh, the following command, which is a app git update and then a app git install. That should fix it. Let's prove that. Let's take a second. It's going to get everything up to date. Okay, we'll pause the video for a second. All right, still progressing here. Okay, so that should have updated all our packages and also um, installed the VSFTPD. So let's, we can check that by doing a system CTL status VSFTPD. And we do see it's there. So what we want to do now is we want to enable that service. So what it does when you enable is it tells um, Linux to start this every time the system boots. So we'll do a system CTL enable VSFTPD. Next thing you want to do or you need to do in order to actually put anything on this FTP server or upload anything to it, I should say, is you're going to have to modify the configuration file for the service. So we'll use a text editor called Nano. You can use VI or Vim if you want, but or any other text editor for that matter. I'm just going to demonstrate with nano. Very simple. So you'll do nano space uh, forward slash etsy forward slash vsftp.conf to get into the configuration file. And we're looking for a one-liner that says write enable equals yes. That's right here. So all you're going to do, guys, is delete the, uh, delete the hashtag in front of that. And that will uncomment the line. And now it says write enabled equals yes. So once you do that, you do a control O to save, hit enter, and do a control X to exit. Again, all these commands will be in the uh, description. Let's clear the screen, make it a little cleaner. OK, now that we've enabled um, the ability to write into that VSFTP server, let's go ahead and restart the service. Okay, so now we need to know what our IP is so that we can connect to this from the other Kali box. Make note of your IP, it'll be different. So I'll jump back to the first Kali VM and I'll do FTP followed by the IP address of the 
um, FTP server, which is the second Linux box. And this should prompt us for username and password, which it did. Okay, so now we are um, successfully connected to the FTP server. So there's a couple things we can do here. When you want to upload a file, you're going to use the put command. So put is uh, equivalent to upload. Get is equivalent to download. So the default directories that we'll be working on are the home Kali directories. On the machine, the client machine, which is what we're looking at here, where we're connecting to the server, we can specify a different directory. Um, you can also do that on the remote end, but to keep it simple here, I'll just put and get from the home Kali directory on the FTP server. So what we'll do first is we'll do an example where we upload a file. So you see I have a cron test file in the desktop here. So I'm gonna do put and then specify the path, which is home Kali desktop and the file cron test. And then I'm gonna upload that to the remote machine, home Kali cron test. So when you do a put, you're specifying the local file first and then you're specifying the remote directory and file second. So that should have uploaded the cron test file to home Kali on the other on the FTP server, which is the second Linux box. So to see that, let's do an ls home Kali. And we see that the cron test is now there. So let's go ahead and create a quick dummy file on the server and then we'll do a uh, git, which is a download. So to create a file, you can use touch and then we'll do home Kali and we'll say dummy file one. So now if we do an ls home Kali, we say there's a dummy file one file there. So let's jump back to the FTP client and let's download that file. So when you do a get or a download, you're gonna go in reverse of what we did on the put. So now you're gonna specify get, you're gonna specify the remote directory and file first. So you're saying get from the server, home Kali dummy file one, and you're gonna place it on the local machine or the client, home Kali desktop dummy file one. So if we do this, we should see a dummy file one on the desktop. And there it is, guys. So that's how you transfer files between two Linux machines. I showed you how to install a FTP service, how to enable it so it starts every time the system boots, how to make it writable so that we're allowed to actually upload and download files, and then we walk through a demonstration of the put, which is an upload using FTP, and a get, which is a download of FTP. Another handy thing to know how to do is uh, oftentimes we work with Linux and Windows and maybe we need to get files to and from those systems. So you can use a number of different clients on the Windows side to get files to and from the Linux environment. I'll use WinSCP in my example. It's a free client out there. You can download it. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. Let's do new session in WinSCP, and I will do new site. We're gonna use FTP, and then you're gonna type in the IP address of that Linux box that's running the uh, FT the VSFTPD service. So that was 86.37 in my case. Yours will be different. Specify the username and password, and we are connected, guys. So if I want, I can create a file. Let me see. I'll just move one of these files over there. So let's put it on the home Kali directory. It's called USB script. And I'll just drag it right over there. So that was moving a file from Windows to that uh, Linux box, which is running the VSFTPD service. So now if we ls that directory, I should see that USB script.txt. Perfect. And you can do a download as well. So all you would have to do is drag the dummy file, or you can click download, but you could drag it right into the directory where you want it, right? So I can drag this right into documents. And there it is. So now I should have a dummy file in here. If we can find it. There it is, dummy file. So as simple as that, guys, get yourself a WinSCP or any other client that's capable of FTP connectivity 
and you can authenticate against the Linux box that's hosting the VSFTP service and you can do a download or upload by simply dragging and dropping. So that's how you get files to and from, um, I should say, between Windows and Linux environments. At least that's one way to do it. Uh, yeah, again, guys, quick tutorial here. Linux fundamentals, showing you how to transfer files between boxes, uh, whether they're Windows and Linux or Linux and Linux. And, um, yeah, appreciate you guys sticking around to the end here. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know if you want to see a follow-up where I show you how to do secure FTP. All right, guys. Until the next one, take care.